Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word for a Wednesday. Welcome to Hump Day here at the end of May 2024. Of course, we really have one more full week in May, but uh, we're heading toward Memorial Day weekend, so I hope all is well with you and your family. We're going to look at another picture of Jesus, so join me over in the little book of Ruth in the Old Testament. Ruth's only four chapters long, but it's a beautiful, lengthy picture of the kinsman redeemer. Again, yesterday we saw a Christophany in the Old Testament, an actual appearance of the Lord Jesus. Today, we're looking at the line of Messiah and how God once again inserts a Gentile into the genealogy of Jesus Christ. We'll see that near the end as well. But what's so special about this book? Well, it's a beautiful picture who, how God redeems out of difficult circumstances. There's some great applications to our lives even today. And in our Walk Through the Bible devotional series, it begins covering this particular devotion by saying, according to God's law, each family's piece of the inheritance in the promised land was to remain within the family, if at all possible. Now, that meant that whenever someone needed to sell land, say to get out of debt, the nearest relatives had to be given the option to buy it before anyone else could. It also meant that whenever a man died without heirs, his nearest surviving male relative was obligated to marry his widow and father heirs through her. Otherwise, families risked losing their piece of the promised inheritance. Now, several of those laws are at play in the book of Ruth, in this story of Naomi, the embittered mom who's lost both her husband and two sons, and a daughter-in-law, Ruth, who sticks with her through thick and thin. A mother and daughter-in-law who returned to Israel from Moab as widows on the verge of losing the family inheritance. And that's how the beautiful story begins. And as a part of that story, there's something very important that has been in our life. When we were married in 1976, Sue had the idea that she wanted something inserted in our wedding vows from this book, from the book of Ruth. And it's something that you would think, well, what, what, what would that be? Oh, surely something from chapter four, right? No, something from chapter one. And not words that Boaz and Ruth spoke to each other, but words that Ruth spoke to Naomi. And you'll see how appropriate those are and why they are used in many wedding ceremonies. We memorized this passage and stood on the stage at the Baptist Tabernacle in Covington, Georgia, looked into each other's eyes and said, Again, from the King James Version, chapter 1, verse 16, if you want to find these words, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried, and the Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Those are beautiful lines, aren't they? And of course, a little difficult to utter, perhaps, because of the Shakespearean language, but you can see why that's the beautiful flowing language that's often used in weddings, even to this day. Well, those, those are the words that Ruth uttered to Naomi and said, I'm not leaving you, as they went back to Bethlehem, not knowing what the future might hold. And it is that beautiful picture in which we find Ruth and Naomi being redeemed by that picture of a kinsman redeemer in the Old Testament that's also a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what had, what had happened? Well, Naomi lost everything a field in Israel, her husband and her two sons, so she needed a family member to step forward and help. Ruth approached Boaz, a kind relative of her dead husband, inviting him to redeem her and the property. Well, after clearing it with an even closer relative, Boaz gladly agreed, and the widows who had lost hope suddenly found it again. Naomi's bitterness over her hardships gave way to joy, and the family's inheritance remained in the family, and God restored their lives. Folks, we also long for redemption 
And just as Naomi's family left the promised land and nearly lost everything, the human race left Eden and lost many of the blessings God wanted to give us. We've each experienced this, and we know about brokenness and loss. You see, life is not as it should be, yet God is gracious to sustain and bless us anyway, even when we aren't living in our promised land. Still, we crave a deeper, fuller restoration. We need someone to buy us back, to restore what we've lost, to keep our inheritance safe for us by bringing us back into the family. We need a Redeemer. And that's what Jesus does for us. He buys back what we lost. He's the member of God's family who steps in and provides what we could not provide for ourselves. He brings us back to God who adopts us into his family and promises us the full inheritance of his kingdom. Jesus restores our lives. You know, I don't always read the reflections from some of these devotionals through walk through the Bible, but this one is particularly important today. As you think about this passage, in what area of life have you experienced loss and brokenness? How does this story of Naomi and Ruth even encourage you about God's plan to restore fullness in those areas? You know, we've all got the stories of brokenness and loss and what could have been but wasn't and the things that slipped away, how do those impact you even today when you see that there is a restoration coming through the Lord Jesus Christ? Is there any area of life in which you've lost hope? What ways do you think God wants to renew your hope today through this story of Ruth? Because that's what it's all about. It's such a beautiful story that I took the example of Dr. Jerry Vines, who preached that series Grace in the Fields of Bethlehem as a Christmas series in December. <laughs> and I did the same thing, preaching from the book of Ruth at Christmas four different times in my ministry in four different series. As we look at how the whole picture of why Jesus came to the earth in the first place is exemplified in those four chapters of that little book of Ruth. And when we look at how God has given us this Messiah, this person who is our kinsman redeemer to restore us, then we see that there's a possibility for restoration in every area of our life and the lives of those around us. So don't be afraid to ask Jesus for restoration in your life because of what he has demonstrated as his work right here in the little romantic book of Ruth. What do we read is the end of the story? Chapter 4 of Ruth, verse 13 is where I want to pick up this morning, where it says, Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. He slept with her and the Lord granted conception to her and she gave birth to a son. Well, the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you without a family redeemer today. May his name become well known in Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. Indeed, your daughter-in-law who loves you and is better to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Naomi took the child, placed him on her lap, and became a mother to him. The neighbor women said, a son has been born to Naomi. Now hang on before we see who the son was and who his sons were you got to remember that here's the picture of Ruth, not a typical Hebrew girl, but a woman from Moab who's been brought through tragedy into the very people of God in Israel and into the line of Messiah because it says that they named this little boy Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. That's right, King David. So this beautiful story is a picture not only of how you and I can be restored and how God has this restoration principle at work in our lives, but it's the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ coming with yet another, as we saw Rahab inserted into the line of the Messiah earlier, another Gentile that's a part of the picture of salvation, letting us know that it's not just for the Jews it's for the world, but isn't that what his word says? It was Jesus who spoke the famous words that God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God bless you today. I'll see you again tomorrow as we wake up in his word.